Welcome back to the Flash Action Script 3.0 Sound Programming Video Textbook. In this part, we'll demonstrate how to create the popular play pause style of media play button, one that changes from a play button symbol to a pause button symbol magically, and vice versa depending on what state of play the media is in. Now, it's important to keep in mind that you can do this for any style of button that you've created, custom button, or if you did like I did and you went to the window common libraries and you grabbed out buttons from there. You can do the same thing that I'm about to do using any style of button whether you create a custom or you use one of the stock buttons. So right click it, convert it to symbol. This time you're going to convert it to a movie clip. Just put the registration to the top left. What it's named inside the library is not significant really, but you can name it whatever you want. Press OK. So now that we have a movie clip there, let's give that movie clip the instance name of play underscore btn just like our button had now if we double click inside this movie clip we'll see that there's our button with instance name play underscore btn let's remove that instance name on that button we don't need it anymore because now where the audio code is this button is now a movie clip with the name of play underscore btn so it'll still function in the same way it did before if you, if you test your file right now yeah, let's change this to false. Let's test the file. See? It still plays the file. But now it's a movie clip symbol. The reason why we do that is so we can go inside of it now. And we're going to have two layers. The top layer, we're going to call, just type in actions. And right here, you're going to put a stop action. So in layer one, you can t rename this one buttons. So in this frame, you know you have this play button sitting here. So what we're going to do is add another keyframe here. Press F6. On that keyframe, I'm going to press Control X. I'm going to go into the window, common libraries, buttons, and I'm going to pull out the pause button from the same set that I pulled out the play button from. Right there. I'm going to bring it out to stage. Pop it right where I think it should go. If it's not in the exact same spot as the play button, I'll put it in the same exact spot. So let's see, this one's at coordinates of 14 and 11. Let's put this one at 14 and 11. That way, there's no difference in its positioning in there. So you can go from one frame to the next, and you can see one's a play symbol, one's a pause button. So you have the play and your pause button still there. And you can also put a stop action here if you like. It's not really necessary, but it won't hurt anything, and it'll make sure things stop when they get to that frame. So now all you have to do is in your audio code, let's go back into the audio movie clip. Let's close that out. Now this button is all set up now to where we can code it to where when people press it or when the song starts playing or finishes playing or whatever, we can change what that symbol displays as depending on what the state of play of the media is in. We can just command this little movie clip here to go to either frame one or two depending on what our needs are. Now the first thing we need in our action script if we plan on making that a play pause style of button is to create a new variable. This one we're going to call pause position. This is going to be a number. It's going to start off with a value of zero at the top of the script. And that value will change as people are hitting your play pause button because that number is going to hold the exact number for where the person is in listening of the track or the media that's playing. This, so if the track starts playing, 20 seconds into it they press the play pause button. It means we have to record that position they were at at that very second. And that's what that number is going to do. So we take that variable and we sync it right in here where it says sound.play put the pause position variable right there and you can even put it down here. And remember where I said in the last video I hinted upon taking these five lines that are identical to these five lines and putting it within a universal function? That way you don't have the same five lines written out twice because that's pointless in programming when you can put things in custom functions. So I might wind up taking these five lines and assembling them into a custom function that way when I need to execute them I can call upon those five lines, but they're only written into the script once. But for now, I'm just going to leave it in there just like it is. 
same five lines in both sections. And really, up in this one, you don't even need it. But it's not going to hurt anything because it's set at a pause position of zero. So it's going to start from the beginning of the song there, no matter what, if autoplay is equal to true when the player just initially loads. This here is for the play button. So inside of the play button function that we created in the last lesson, all you have to do now is add an else condition to that if statement. Go down a couple lines, close off your curly brace, and now you have an area to play some code for the condition of if is playing is equal to true. Because this code here is going to run if is playing is equal to false. But now we want to run some code if is playing is equal to true. So this else condition will supply us a mechanism for that. So inside of that part of the condition statement, you put this code. First thing is you establish what the channels dot position is and you make that the pause position's value. So whatever position the song is currently at, when they press that button, we're going to record that number. Then we're going to say channel dot stop. This stops the sound from playing. Then we instruct the play button that's now a movie clip to go to and stop on its frame one. That means it's going to show its play symbol. <clears throat> so the person can start the song back up again. Then you last thing you do in there is you take your is playing boolean variable and you put that to false. So if you're going to change the frame of the play button here, you have to change it here too. If is playing is equal to false in this part of the code, this is where we're going to make the play button go to and stop frame 2. Then it's going to show the pause symbol. So if the song starts up and it's playing, somebody presses the play button, we want that to show the pause symbol on the button magically. So all you have to do is put play underscore btn dot go to and stop two. That'll go to frame two of this movie clip, which shows the pause symbol right there. Okay, simple enough. I think it is. And you might have to do the same thing up here. Let's just do that for good measure. Right there. But like I said, we're probably going to take these lines and compile them into a universal function so we're not writing them over and over again when they're the same five exact lines or same six lines now. So just keep in mind, coming up soon I might take these six lines and make a universal function out of them. So if the player is set to autoplay false, that means when they hit the play button it should go, it should give them a pause symbol. Let's see. Yep, there's a pause symbol on the button. Now if I hit it again, it actually pauses the song and it gives me the play button back. So there's your magical play pause type button. You hit the, pay, the play button again, it resumes from exactly the point it was. It doesn't go back to the beginning, it resumes from the exact pause position that you had it. And then right here in your on playback complete event, you just make sure our pause position gets set to zero. Equals zero. So let's see if we need to update this text field in here. Let's see. Status text might need to say the song is paused right here. The song is paused. And I think that'll do it. But that status text is not going to stay there very long. We're just using that for production purposes. Song is paused. Song is now playing. Song is paused. And there you have it.